I'm not on the road or not busy doing stuff here in the studio, um, I am a tinkerer. Ever since I was a kid, I've uh, taken guitars apart, and especially Stratocasters and Telecasters, because they are the assembly line guitars they are, it's really easy to mix and match. Yes, yeah, so I've been lucky to have literally probably thousands of guitars in my hands through the years, and um, I've kind of made a point of learning how to make them be the best they can. I love taking little orphans or little maybe forgotten um, diamonds in the rough and kind of bringing them to life. Um, so I wanted to do this series on what makes a guitar great. And I'm going to take some individual guitars that uh, people have given me or that I own. And it's hit or miss. When companies put stuff together, they can choose good woods and stuff, but there's still no guarantee that it's going to be a great instrument. You know, for a long time, people hyped up the bigger the better. And that's not always true. Sometimes big, huge, massive necks don't sound like anything. And it's not always um, how much it costs or what name is on the headstock. I mean, a great guitar is a great guitar. So I'm gonna point out a few things that I found and discovered, and hopefully you'll learn some from all this too. So this first guitar I have here is a true Frankenstrat. Um, now I grew up in the golden age of guitar. My heroes when I was a kid were Jeff, well still are, were Jeff Beck, Dwayne Allman, uh, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, these are guys I wanted to be. I wanted to look like them. I wanted to play like them. And I wanted to play the guitars they played. So I've always been drawn to more traditional um, uh, looking guitars. So I've always had a thing for the old guitars, but of course, old Stratocasters, old Gibsons cost a whole lot of money if you hadn't noticed. But I found there's ways you can beat the system and get into like a great old guitar without breaking the bank. So I'm gonna tell you what makes this parts caster great. Number one, the neck, I got, uh, I traded some stuff and I paid a little money for it, but what it is is a 1965 neck, it's stamped on the, on the heel of the guitar. But the reason I was able to get it um, at a fair price was because the tuners had been routed out. Nobody knew these guitars were, were gonna be worth more if you didn't do that. So back in the 70s and 80s, a lot of guys replaced the Fender uh, tuners with more, uh, with finer quality shallers and grovers and stuff. So a lot of them had enlarged holes, which you can find bushings for to fix. Um, this one had been refretted, which of course lowers the value, but it makes it more playable. This one also had, somebody had put an extra fret in the end, because back in the 80s, everybody wanted that high D, 22 frets. So all those things, that's since been taken out. It's, it's like filled in and everything. So basically, I've got this old, nice deep rosewood maybe it's brazilian i'm not sure but it's you know hardened like they do when they get old it almost feels like marble i've got this great neck um for a fraction of the price you would for the original one and there's something i have personally feel like a majority of the tone of an electric guitar is in the neck i think it goes neck pickups and then body the body kind of shapes the tone overall but basically I have a 50, 1952 uh, Esquire behind me someplace, and I've had that neck on several different bodies, and every one of them sounded great. So I'm kind of a believer that the neck, if it's been played a lot, uh, and it's old, and it's dried out, and it's good tone wood, combination of all those things make for a really great neck. Um, this body I got for a fraction because it had been painted. It's a 1960 body, um, kind of designated by where these screws are. I think it's this one or that one. Should be over a little bit than the other years. Anyway, uh, when I got this, it had been refinished with a like a white out type of white, a really kind of obnoxious white that I didn't like. So I sprayed it with a little amber uh, nitrocellulose to give it kind of this faded Olympic white look. Came out pretty good. And probably like a lot of you guys, I just collect parts. They sit in drawers and they sit around um, in my little studio for sometimes years. And I finally get around to putting them together. Uh, the pickups I had acquired years ago, they have been rewrapped, but they are 1956 pickups. When I had this one 
rewrapped because it had died on a gig. I had it rewrapped super hot or hotter. Uh, so it's like 6.5, it's not that hot, but more like a 60s uh, bridge pickup, which made for a bigger sound. The old material for the magnets, I don't think you can really get anymore, like the old stuff. So these sound great. Uh, this bridge is also from a 56, from an old guitar I had lying around. I was able to get into the feel and the sound and the look of uh, an actual old 1965 neck, which is one big component of why this guitar is great. I think one of the most important things for getting a guitar to sound and feel great um, is to set it up properly. I can't tell you how many times I've gone in music stores and I'll see a guitar that's quite attractive and I'll play it and it plays horribly. And the first thing I do is put it back on the wall. And it's it kind of an art form. I've done it ever since I was in high school and it's messing with the truss rod, the slots at the uh, nut and the uh, bridge uh, setup and the pitch. Everything is important. It's all like a, it's kind of like an old 60s American car, you know, they're great and they're beautiful, but you have to constantly maintain, you know, the rack and pinion steering or whatever. Don't be afraid to adjust the truss rod. The truss rod, you really can't do much harm to it unless you ratchet it like a tire jack. But if you just turn it a quarter tone, a oh, quarter tone, if you turn it just a quarter turn, um, that sometimes is enough to make the difference. It comes from the factory with a uh, slight uh, bow in it to compensate for the oscillation of the string. But I have found, and many guitar players, I believe, like the neck pretty much straight because some law of physics, when you straighten it out, uh, the tension feels so much uh, more comfortable. So that's the first thing I do is make sure the truss rod works, straighten out the neck, adjust at the bridge, uh, follow the contour of the, uh, the uh, fretboard I do, um, lower it as much as I can, and then I set the, uh, the slots with some files. Now, me personally, just on a personal note, um, I have a super light right hand picking and a real heavy left hand, so I fret, I do a lot of legato stuff. So I get away with a lot, a lot lower action than some guys would, would prefer. Some guys who pick up my guitar, they'll hit it and they think it buzzes because they're hitting it harder than I ever would. So these are all old parts that I got into trades off of junk guitars. Uh, I don't know, but uh, the pickups sound awesome. I've got the old Brazilian Rosewood on this fretboard that feels great. It's just broken in. The shoulders on the fretboard are rounded. Um, what can I say? This is one of my favorite sounding strats. The thing that makes this guitar great is that it's all old parts. It has the look. It's a great weight. I got into it for a fraction of what uh, either one of these original parts would have cost if they were on the original whole guitar. And bottom line, it sounds really good.